All righty. Okay. And here we are, 2021 live masterminding with Neil Schwartz. Our great guest today is Melissa Lopes. Melissa, good morning. Good morning. Glad you're here. Fantastic. We're going to kick it off here really, really quick. We have a group of people around uh, 13 or 1400 in our mastermind group now. It's been growing with leaps and bounds recently. We're looking forward to uh, expanding, probably doubling that as the year goes on. And we're looking for interaction. We're looking for communication. We're looking for good best practices, et cetera. And uh, we, last year, we interviewed about 54 agents from all over the uh, country in different walks of life, et cetera, et cetera. The one common thing was that uh, they had a fabulous year, even amongst the whole COVID situation in 2020. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna looking forward to starting off our year with Melissa, learning about her, what some of her best practices are, what she's learned in, in 2020 with COVID and what she's gonna be doing in uh, 2021. So Melissa, Yes. Would you start and share a little bit, maybe a Reader's Digest version of uh, <clears throat> how you started in the business, where you came from, uh, et cetera, maybe even the, the city that you're working from right now? Sure, absolutely. Um, so again, my name is Melissa Lopes. I have been in real estate now for just about 18 years. Um, I start before real estate, I was in the fitness industry and I was struggling financially and, um, was in the gym one day and a gentleman was there who was a real estate agent and said to me, Hey, if you want to make some quick, easy money, you should get your real estate license. Quick, easy money. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'll try it. And so, you know, I went and watched the videos. I got the book. I studied. I went to the test. I passed. I went my interview, if that's what you want to call it, with my first agency was just basically an introduction. They handed me a key and told me to answer the phones. So this was in 2002 when the market was just starting to take off. Didn't really know what I was doing. I was just doing it part-time for about five years. And then when I met my husband, I decided to relocate and I figured, you know what, this is probably a great time to jump into this full time and see if I can do something with it. Still didn't really know what I was doing. Started at an agency that gave me some great training, basically started like a brand new agent, rebuilt, every, rebuilt my business. Um, this was in 2008. So this is when the market was just really getting challenging here. We was, the inventory was flooded with a lot of bank owned properties. Um, but I had my best year that year. I, I closed 22 transactions prior to that. When I was doing it part-time, I was probably closing six to eight. Um, I was with that company for about six years, just kind of maintaining, not really making much growth. And then, um, I don't know if you know Kathy Schweitzer, who is um, a senior coach with MFO. Sure. She works with she works at our company, and she cold called me one day and convinced me to sit down and meet with her. So I did, and from there I decided I, it was time to make a change. I moved over to her company, and she took me um, to my first MFO Superstar Retreat in 2013 in South Beach. And I was hooked. I finally felt like someone gave me the instructions on how to do my job and not only do it, but do it really well. Um, I signed up for one-on-one -on -one coaching in 2013 at that retreat. Two years later, I um, moved up. I changed over to Premier Coaching. And my real estate, my business has grown every year. Um, this past year, I had my best year ever. In 2020? 2020, yes. So, and and what what were the numbers? So, I I had 46 closed transactions, which gave me uh, $575,000 gross income, and I'm going into 2021 with nine pending. So, uh, actually, I closed one yesterday and one today, so I have seven pending now. So, but already two two closed and seven pending for yep. 2021. Yes. And 46 closed transactions. 
for almost six hundred thousand uh, dollars. Correct. Yes. In in two thousand and twenty, in the middle of COVID, was your best year ever. Was my best year ever. And in saying that, I want to say when COVID hit, I was I was a deer in the headlights for probably a good few weeks. Um, just a little bit of where my mindset was at that time. Um, the summer before we, my husband and I started a major renovation in our home, which just grew and grew. It, the, the cost doubled. We ended up having to move out in January. We thought it was going to be a four month. It turned into four months. So I didn't know if the, the renovations were going to be able to be completed during COVID. I didn't know if we were going to get shut down. Um, and then so on top of run that, out of money. <laughs> in, I didn't know what was going to happen with my income. Um, sure. Sure. My mother-in-law, who had health issues, was exposed to someone with COVID. So we thought we were going to be saying goodbye to her. My sister was diagnosed with cancer right in the beginning. So it was just like, I didn't, what kept me going was MFO. I finally just kind of, just with Mike's daily messages coming out multiple times each day, his videos, um, once they started adapt, I was on that. I just made sure I was pumping my head with positive information all the time and wow. working my database. Wow, that's fantastic. What, what state, what city are you in? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say that. I'm in um, Marblehead, Massachusetts, which is about 30 minutes north of Boston. Uh -huh. I personally, personally live in Salem, Massachusetts, which is the well, next I've town been, over. I've been through there, it's beautiful. It's really nice. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very nice. Very quaint area. So like 46 transactions, you, you've got to be one of the top selling agents in that town. I mean, there aren't that many transactions, right? No. I mean, there's some teams, there's some big teams that do a lot of production, but there aren't that many. No. Right. And, the, and you're a, a sole practitioner or do you have people on your team? I have one, one woman who works with me and I will say I credit her to a lot of what I'm able to do because I can delegate a lot to her so that I can focus on bringing in new business. So her, her role is more admin rather than production? More admin, but she does a lot um, with buyers. Oh, okay. um, she'll, she'll show the listings. Um, so I... I, she's more than just a transaction coordinator. She does she does a little bit of everything. Okay. All right. Great. Excellent. So when did you actually bring this person on board? At, at how many deals was that? Um, I brought. She came to work with me about a little over two years ago. Okay. Um, I did have another assistant prior to that. Um, who I felt like once I, I felt like. I was probably spending too much time with her and that was actually costing me some business. Um, Neve, who works with me is, she's just phenomenal. She's great. She, she's a, a licensed real estate agent. She gives top-notch customer service. I know I can hand my transactions over to her and she's gonna take care of them as if they were her own. Excellent, thank you, Melissa. So your business, the 46 transactions closed, you said, we're mostly past client and sphere. How did that break down? Do you have, do you know the numbers? I'd say it's about, it was about 70% from my database. Okay. And do you keep your database on a particular CRM or is it um, an Excel spreadsheet? I mean, how do you manage Just that? an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Um, and um, have you always worked your past client and sphere? Or um, I started, I, not as much as I do now. Um, I, well, it's probably been about three years now when I started, when I was coaching with Ron Cronin, I was with him for a little over a year. We focused on that. Um, so I hired someone to write my quarterly letters. So I make sure that those go out every quarter. Um, and then our marketing department has my mailing list. They just send them out automatically. Um, and then I'm calling everybody once a quarter and then I probably have a probably have about 50 people that I will talk to at least once a month and then maybe 10 to 15 that I talk to almost every week multiple times a week like developers investors that kind of thing so about so of the 46 closed transactions 
about 30, 32 came from past client and sphere. Yeah. Got it. And, and that's from the system by touching people, phone calls, mail, sounds like email, and just some general stay in touch stuff. Do you do a lot of social media? I don't. I don't. Okay, so um, I, I've got somebody else that's right now that we're going to try to tap into that a little bit only because with millennials and so many people, you know, so tapped into social media, I, I'm just going to try it and see how it goes. Like I've never used it before. Okay. All right. So a little bit of Facebook and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Instagram. I think, I think that's what we're going to look at. Okay, cool. All right. Excellent. Um, so the other 12 transactions or so that you do, where do they come from? Um, expired for sale by owners. Um, sometimes it's just, just listed, just sold. I actually have um, an appointment this week that I just got from a just sold call. Got it. Okay, excellent. So um, in your day, what, what, what time does your day start, Melissa, generally? I am up at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's because you can't sleep and you have insomnia or? <laughs> <laughs> no, I get up at four. I start my, I always start my morning off listening to something positive while I'm doing like a morning stretch or whatnot. Um, and then between 4.30 and five, I will, um, if there's an adapt video, I'll watch that. Um, if not, I'll watch something on um, MFO website. Then I write out my affirmations and I will write out a script every day that I email to an accountability partner. Whoa, so you still write your scripts? I do. Every day, I've been doing it every single day for over two years now. Real, now, when you say every day, every work day or every day day? Every, Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, okay, got it, all right. Um, and so you write a script for two years, you've been writing scripts like, uh, like, when do you plan on moving? Stuff like that. Yeah, pretty. I always will. Well, I wrote the um, the listing presentation every day for a year straight. Wow. And, yeah, and then did it uh, help? It did absolutely. <laughs> in, in 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 what way? Give me because you know we 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 teach this and practice this and encourage this type of stuff all the time, but sometimes they don't see the 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 results. What? Yeah, Honestly, it, it just becomes more conversational. And then I will even find myself sometimes when I'm talking on the phone to a prospect, you know, talking about, do you understand or has anyone explained to you how buyers determine value in today's marketplace? And it just comes very, just sounds very natural. Comes right out, huh? Comes right out. Wow, that's great. That's fantastic. So uh, going back a little bit, in 2008, you started in the company you're at now, correct? Um, the company I'm at now, I started in two, I came over with Kathy Schweitzer in 2000, the end of 2012. 12, okay, 12, 13, right, okay. Yep. So from then, and then you, at that time, you were doing 20 something deals? Um, with a little less, I had had my son, and my son at the time was about two. So oh. I was kind of, I was juggling that too and trying to manage all that. Um, I was probably doing about 13, 14 then. Oh, that's when, that, that's right. Cause you got a husband, you got a child, you moved markets, mm -hmm. uh, moved companies. Moved companies. Yeah. You had your hands full. You had, life was in the way. <laughs> it all worked out though. No, it, it all did. led me to Mike eventually. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> So you were doing 18 to 20 transactions then, again, past client and sphere, and then some expireds, just listed, just sold? Um, then, so at the time, in prior to coming to Jay Barrett, um, I was at Cobalt Banker, and it, that was a new market for me. So I got a lot of reloads. They gave me a lot of reload business. And okay. from that, I was able to build a database um, because I was that was when I was in the new market area. Um, and then, yes, when I came over to Kathy, um, it was a combination of, I'd say it was probably maybe 40% database. And then I was doing, I was starting to do some prospecting. So that's what I wanted to talk about at that time. So 2025 
transactions, changing what you're doing. How did you build your database? Right, right now, how big is your database? My dad, my, so my goal is to get it up to 500. I'm only at about 350. Um, okay. And it should be a lot larger, but I wasn't, I wasn't, like I said, I've only been diligent about it for the last probably two and a half, three years. So, um, so right now your database, I'm going to make a point here, I think, I'm going to confirm this. Your database is 350 and you work it pretty regularly, right? I do, yes. Okay. And we say if you work your database pretty regularly, that you'll get about 10% of your database in transactions. Mm -hmm. Last year, you closed about 30, 32 transactions out of a 350 person database. Correct. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> there it is. It keeps working. Yep, exactly. Good job. Congratulations. Wow, that's very cool. So your goal is to get it to 50, excuse me, 500. So you can be doing around 50 deals just from the database. That would, yes. That that, would that's that's the kind of the plan? Yes. How are you yeah. building the database? How, tell, tell us how, tell us how you, well, how do you add to your database? How, what is it, what happens there? So the things that I'm looking at now is adopting the other side of the transaction, especially if my client, if it's my seller and they're moving out of state, um, so really focusing on trying to get the other side of the, the transaction, um, just anybody that I'm giving money to on a regular basis, I want to make sure that they're in there. Um, my son now, um, he's getting older. He just turned 11. So involved more in different sporting events and so forth, making sure I get people's parents, coaches, um, and just, um, talking to as many people as I can when I'm going and, and, on, the, if I go on any like school events or anything like that, and I'm meeting new people. Well, don't you feel, don't, I, I hear this all the time. So it's a tongue in cheek question, but don't you feel pushy and aggressive when you're talking to people at school events about real estate? I used to, but a lot of times people will come out first and even ask me like if, if they know I'm in the business um, if they don't know I'm in the business, just in a conversation, I might ask, you know, just curious, what, what do you do for a living? And then, um, and then they always ask me the same question. Sure. And then we start talking about real estate and I'll just, I'm just curious, do you have anybody that keeps you up to date with anything that's in the market or, and then if they don't, I'd ask if they, if they would like me to keep them up to date with what's going on because they seem really interested. Right. And you'll get a. A, a cell phone number and an email address? Yes. Or and you, I always get the email address. And then if I don't have the cell phone number, I might send a personal email and just ask them, you know, what their cell phone number is in case I have a need to reach them about anything. Because I so always you, find out about things before they hit, hit the internet a lot. Do you find that people are freer, more comfortable giving you an email address than a cell phone number? Not if they've, if I've met them face to face, okay. they're usually fine with it. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Because, um, and then what I'll do sometimes is say, if, if we're in an event, just, you know what, text me your email address and then I have their cell phone number. Ah, for sure. For sure. Melissa, you talked about adopting the, the client on the other side. Can you tell us the, what you do there? What's the procedure? So um, if the agent that they're working with is not a local agent, um, and a lot of times they're not, um, we will we'll have their co contact information just throughout the transaction. And then after a closing or whatnot, just checking in, seeing if there's anything that they need, any service providers, anything like that. And then just kind of try to build some rapport. And then um, I will always just at least add them um, the end of the year, my company always sends out um, a mail, like a, a really nice mailer of all the transactions I closed. And I send it out to everyone in my database and I will include um, the, pe the, the people on the other side of all my transactions. Ah, okay, got it. And you, through the transaction, one way or another, get an email address or a cell phone number of the client. Yes. 
You, you just make it your business to do that. Yes. Got it. Okay. In the transaction there. So um, um, aren't you a little bit hesitant to call the client after the escrow closes uh, and introduce yourself because maybe there's something broken at the house and they're going to want you to fix it? Doesn't Does that come up at all? No, I mean, I don't always, we usually start with the mailings and so forth. And then if there's like, if we have another sale or something in the area, um, those will be people that we would reach out to. Okay, got it. And this, All right, is, so it starts, this is something I've just started with just starting to do. So I'm still kind of okay. figuring it out as I go. Okay, cool. All right. Perfect. Excellent. Um, okay. So tell me about COVID and be making it the year. Okay. You, you said in the very beginning, you were like a deer in the headlights. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that you weren't sure where to go and all the issues. But uh, what grounded you? What what happened to um, kind of say, okay, I can take this on. I can do this. I, um, I want to get into your mindset a little bit there. I think just failing wasn't an option. Um, I this is I had it wasn't just for myself. It was for my family. I had to do this, um, and I had to figure it out. Um, and one of them was, you know, learning learning how to present virtually on Zoom and pra- practicing that every day with my role play partners. Um, I have a, I'm in a great group role play and we, that's what we were all doing at that time. Um, so I started doing some virtual presentations. Um, I also found, you know, because there were a lot of people that weren't working at the time um, and getting the appointment, a lot of these sellers weren't interviewing multiple agents because they weren't meeting in person. So you were finding your competition was less? It was less, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. And you took advantage of this? I took advantage of it. Um, <laughs> and just making sure people were having the proper protocols in place and knowing what to tell people so that they could feel safe um, and knowing, knowing that they could still get their home sold. So it kind of sounds like you took advantage of what other people were finding to be a hassle you embraced and made it a win for you. Exactly. I Um, had agents, um, there were agents that were telling their clients to take their house off the market and wait. And I would call them. I I got some of those appointments. I got some of those appointments, signed those listings. And not only did I sell their house, but I found them a house to buy. Wow. 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 So you just kept powering through. I just took it one day at a time and powered through. Yes. Powered through it. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Um, Any particular things that you learned during COVID that um, are serving you well right now? Um, I think probably the things that served me the best, it was in doing ADAPT, And listening to Tony Smith's calls, his mindset calls, right? that was huge for me. Um, There was one call that he did on, um, he's talked about an audio recording that Mike did years ago called called Winning. Mm -hmm. And I listened to that and talking about the importance of just changing, changing the input so the output is different. So keeping positive stuff coming in. So I've adopted like I'm reading four to five books at all times. I've got a book that I'm that I will even if it's just I pick it up for 10 or 15 minutes that I'm constantly putting something positive into my head. Um, If I'm in my car, I have a pop. I have some sort of audio book or um, listening to uh, Tony Robbins recording or something. Um, And I I just think that that changed my whole mindset. It. I'm coming more from a place of um, serving, looking how I can help someone rather than what I'm going to get out of it. Got it. Got it. One of the agents that we have in our, uh, in our chat box asked uh, for a particular name of a book or two, you think of anything off the top of your head? Um, 
Well, so one of the things, they're not all real estate related. Um, I'm focusing more on more rounded wealth, not just financial wealth, but I'm looking for physical, spiritual, my fa family relationship. So a great book that I'm reading that pertains to health is, um, uh, I think it's Perfect, Perfect Health. Um, and I'm drawing a blank. It was a book that Mike recommended that was one. Um, the Art of Happiness is a great one by the Dalai Lama. Um, I'm reading Prosperity Consciousness right now, which is a great one. Um, a great recording, and it's available on YouTube. I just, I, and I created a mastermind group for this, or not, not a mastermind group, an accountability group, is uh, 30 Days to Personal Power by Tony Robbins. Yeah, that's great. That was phenomenal. I'm going to go back and do it again. I did that for December and I really felt like it just teed me up for 2021. Um, but we did an accountability group because there's homework after every, every recording uh -huh. and we all would post our, we had to post our, our homework at the end of the day. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so so can, can we talk about accountability group real quick? Sure. Because we get that question all the time, and it sounds like this is something that you, you've comfortably created. So, so, I mean, do you decide who you're going to be with, or you just go talk to four or five people and say, hey, let's do this? I mean, how's that, how's that work for you? Um, I've, I've reached out to, I reached out to one person in particular, and then he reached out to a couple of people that he thought would be good. Um, and we only four of us. Yeah. Um, and then um, trying to think of some of the, it, I've just over the years have met so many people through MFO um, that I just would reach out and text someone. I just recently had another agent reach out to me and ask me if I, we could do an accountability just for lead follow-up. Oh, wow. Um, so wow. every morning we post our leads to each other, what we're gonna, who we're gonna call, what our goal is, what our intentions for that day, calling those people. And then we post at the end of the day, the results. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a well, lot. Yeah, it wasn't my idea. It was his. He came up with it. It was Cornelius Henderson. He's out of D.C. Okay. Good job, Cornelius. I like that. That's very good. Um, let's see. Um, the, one of the questions that Savannah had asked is, at what point did you decide to hire an assistant? How many transactions or so? Or was it a time thing or transaction thing? It was more of a time thing. I want to say, so before I would, in 2013, I actually had a business partner for the first couple of years. Um, and we decided, because we were doing, a, between the two of us, we were probably doing about 45 transactions. We both had small children. So, um, we hired an, uh, an assistant at that time. Then when I broke off on my own, um, I just kind of got used to having someone with me and delegating. Um, so I, can, I, I hired another assistant. And then um, the woman that works with me now, her name is Neve. She kind of, my, my previous assistant went away on vacation and Neve stepped in to help me. And I was this is, she's phenomenal. What am I going to, how do I get her? <laughs> and then uh, my um, other assistant was, she decided she was going to do something else. And I was like, okay, no problem. And then I went straight to Neve and she was more than happy to come work with me. Great. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, huh, that was interesting. Um, so back in, in that time, I guess it was your was your was your first assistant full time or part time? Um, so, in the, that's a great question. So, what I do now is um, what I I've always paid them per transaction, and I've been flexible with the hours. This is these are the checklists. This is what needs to be done. As long as it's done, I don't. I didn't really wasn't too concerned as when when they were in the office. But for the most part, I would say. Um, the first one was probably more part-time. Neve is definitely full-time. And 
And is the assistant as much a transaction coordinator as they are an assistant? Um, like I said, Neve is really more than a, she does a little bit of everything. Um, she's more of a transaction coordinator. She manages all the transactions, all the listing management, um, and then and the buyers. Got it. When you say the buyers, is she actually a buyer's agent showing properties for you? Yes. Does she write the transactions or do you? No, I do. Ah, so she's really a showing agent. And, and do you tell her what properties to show? Yes. Fascinating. Okay, so you're telling her what to show. Uh, let me back up even one step further. Are you getting the sign call or ad call and qualifying the, the client? Yes. I see. Okay. So you're really, they're your client and she's just doing the showing, turns them back over to you. You write the contracts, present the offers, and you, you pay her something for, for doing that? Exactly. Yes. And then okay. if she has somebody from her database, then she would, she would initiate she would initiate the offer, like writing, writing the actual offer and so forth if it's someone from her own database. Great. Do you pay her um, per showing or do you pay her a flat fee if they do a deal? Flat, flat. It's typically a flat fee per transaction. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah, I, I don't need the numbers. I'm just curious yeah. as to as to how, how that works. No, and honestly, and then there's there's some transactions that will turn out to be a lot of work and I'll split it 50-50 with her. Okay, I got it. But but generally speaking, you, you get the lead, you qualify the lead, you tell her what properties to show. Uh, she does that, you turn, she turns the, them back over to you with the con whatever comments, mm -hmm. you write the offer, you present the offer, and then she actually closes the transaction. And then once the offer is accepted, then it's it's back in her, it's back in her court. Got it. Got it. Okay, great. That's great. Yeah. And that seems to be working out well for you. It is. Yes. Can you can you leverage that? How many more deals can you leverage that with the team you have now before you expand that? So we are actually looking to to bring someone else on right now. Okay. Yeah. to do some more of the showing or prospecting or what? Doing probably more assisting in transaction management, helping um, assist with some of the um, administrative stuff. Got it. And by doing this, you think you can go to how many more transactions? So my goal for 2021 is 60 closed transactions. 60 closed. And you have nine already pending. Yes. Two seven pending two closed. Correct. Nice start for the seventh of the month. Yeah. That's right. So we kid around, we say, well, we have seven day all access pass. We've seen that 2021 is giving us and we'll take another seven days. Okay. <laughs> but we're going to keep it short. We don't want any repeats of 2020. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Except in the business, right? Except in the business. Exactly. Exactly. So what other changes do you plan on making, uh, if any, in helping you build out what you're going to do in 2021? Um, really focusing on my morning schedule and not letting that get interrupted. Um, I've set up for myself my goal at the end, by the end of, by Friday, if I don't Hola. have 130 contacts. Hold on, 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 hold on. Robert? Ay, qué locura. No ha parado. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, sorry, Melissa. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was just saying, if I don't have 130 contracts and two contracts signed by Friday, then I have to work on Saturday. Yes. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So two, your deal is two contracts a week. Yes. And 40 weeks will be 80 contracts. Should be 60 deals, right? Six. Yes, correct. Right. Okay. I need to take 60 listings and I think it's close 
sell 42 of them. That's 80 listing appointments. Got it. Got it. That's fantastic. I love it. Good job. Excellent. So what do you think your superpower is, Melissa? I would say, I was thinking about this. I think it's the, the fact that, that I'm coachable. Okay. I am always wanting to learn and grow um, and just keep moving forward. I've always been just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Um, so I would say that that's, and I'm disciplined. I'm very disciplined. I know I could be more disciplined, especially after like listening to like the Josh Barkers and, and, and so forth. I'm like, I thought I was disciplined, but, um, but my morning schedule, um, I think that will, will really carry me through too, as long as I don't let anything interrupt my prospecting time specifically. Got it. So you're going to get the morning right. Mm -hmm. When you get the morning right, the afternoon kind of takes care of itself. Doesn't it really it? does. And I, yeah. I, and I feel, I, it, I feel very comfortable just letting it fall into place when my morning doesn't start off right. The rest of the day is just not, not doesn't typically go well for me. Yeah, thank you. Um, before we open up for questions, I have one last thought or one last question for you uh, from me is, um, is there a particular objection handler that you like or a particular phrase or a, a particular setup that you do that when this happens, you do this and it generally works out well for you? Is there anything you can think like that? Um, yeah, I was thinking about this. Um, I think it's more the one that I have the best luck with, um, is I need to think it over. Um, okay. because I have a, I have three steps to it. Um, I could, I started off with just trying to isolate what the actual objection is going through what it is that they want to think about. Is it, is it, do they even want to sell now after hearing all this information? And if they do, then finding out, you know, they, they comfortable with the price that we've determined the market will support. Are you okay with a little quick, quick role play between us? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll try to follow your lead. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah. okay. So I, 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 we're close, but I really need to think it over a little bit, Melissa. Of course, you know, and, and I can appreciate that. I know this is a big decision for you and saying that, you know, before I go, just so I understand exactly what it is that you, you want to think about, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Of course. Okay, great. Well, Neil, I know I've thrown a lot of information at you. And I know sometimes after people are trying to process all this, they start thinking if they even want to sell their home. Is that something that you need to think about right now? No, no, I, we, 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 we want and need to sell. So that, that's for sure. Uh -huh. Perfect. Okay. So you want and need to sell. That's great. And after looking at the properties that we saw that it's sold, are you comfortable with the price that we've come up with that the market will support? Well, I was hoping to get a little bit more, but I do understand the way you presented the pricing. Okay, great. Super. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And as far as the contract, you're comfortable with, with the commission that we've, we've discussed and the terms and conditions? Well, that's kind of a bit of a stickler there. I, um, the commission, I, I, I'd, I'd really like to negotiate a little bit with that. that. That is one of the things that's on my mind. Okay. So other than the commission, if we can come to an agreement on the commission, is there anything else that would keep you from signing a contract with me today? Uh, no, not at all. No? Okay. So as we pointed out, the commission is 5% then the, the term of the contract is six. So all we need to do at this point is to simply sign the contract so I can help you and your family get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? <laughs> uh, that was great. That was great. That well, is and great. Just, to, just to point out, if it, at that point, if, they're if they say they're fine with the commission and they say um, they feel comfortable that I can get it sold, I'll typically say, then let's get started. Why don't we just get started? And if they still say no, they really want to think about it. Then I'll say, you know, why don't we do this then? Why don't we at least go through the listing paperwork and so we can get everything signed and I'll put in the contract. I'll give you 24 hours to think about it and I'll call you tomorrow. And if you're not, 
if you've decided you don't want to, I'll tear it up. You have no further obligation. And if you're ready, then I can get to work for you immediately. So Melissa, what I think I'm hearing is that you're using the objection handlers on the people that you're talking to, right? Yes. And are you telling me that the objection handlers used this way actually work? They do. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I've even great. had someone say, but they don't want to go through that. And I'll say, you know what? How about this? And just sign it. I'll leave it here with you. Uh, you call me and I'll come back and get it or you can drop it off. Somebody did that. And two hours later, they called me and they said they just left it in my mailbox at the office. Wow. That's fantastic. Very, very cool. Uh, Melissa, you open, uh, open to take a couple of questions? Sure. Fantastic. Okay. So let's go. Who wants, uh, who's got a question for Melissa? Quick question. Go ahead, Gina. Uh, can you expound on the 30 days, Tony Robin? Is that a recording, a podcast, or a book? It's a recording on YouTube. If you do okay. um, 30 days personal, Tony Robin's uh, 30 days of personal power, you'll, they should all come up. Okay, um, and then they'll come, they're in there individually as day one, day two, day three. So and so that's on. actually all three, Gina. It is a book and it is oh. a recording. <laughs> and oh, it's I'm on sorry. YouTube. I thought she was asking where I did it. Sorry. No, no, no. no. Oh, it's, okay. it, it, you, it's, it's, it's an old product, many, many, many years old, but one of his best. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, You're absolutely. Welcome. Okay, good job. Other questions for Melissa? Armin, go ahead. Melissa, I, I find it interesting that you feel, you said that if you don't sign two contracts in the week that you have to work Saturday. Um, my boss is smiling because not, not more than a one hour ago, he told me that I got to get a contract during the week or I have to work Saturday. So where did you get that idea? Ira, my coach. Oh. <laughs> But I, I said to but the, honestly, the universe, Armin, the universe. <laughs> if you have a really good rapport with someone and you're on a listing appointment and they're thinking about it, you can always say, listen, could you just sign this so I don't have to work on Saturday? <laughs> That's good. That's, a good That's it. My coach says, if I don't get a contract this week, I have to work Saturday. Please, my kids want to go to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know what? Half the time, they probably sign the thing. Exactly. Exactly. Good job. Okay. Who else do we have on here that's got a question? Uh, from hey, Neil, there was a question in the chat box. It's from Linda Holmes. It says, are you adding or expanding on any prospecting sources this year? Good question. Melissa. Um, adding or expanding? I am I'm focusing this month a lot on the just listed, just sold, because that's what Mike said to, to focus on this month in, in the database. Um, but no, it's typically just listed, just sold, expired to sale by owners, database, um, and just working on building that database so I have more people to call. Yeah. Do you hear database, database, uh, 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 database, 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 uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that's where it's at. Good job, Melissa. Excellent. Okay. Other questions for Melissa? Go I ahead, Yvonne. Yvonne. question. Yeah. Yvonne, Hi, Melissa. Go ahead. Melissa is Ivan. Nice seeing you here, even though we saw each other at Iris group call quite a few oh, times. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so nice to see you here. I have a, two questions for you. Number one, you said you hire somebody to write the quarterly letter for your clients? Yes. So my question is, how and where did you find this kind of person to write? So she's actually, she, I was lucky. She's somebody that works in my office. She's one of the admins. Um, oh. and she used to be a real estate agent, so she understands the market. Um, and she'll just do research, um, and pull some, she'll look at a, a newsletters. I get newsletters from people all the time. I'll forward them to her too. And I'll be like, see, see if there's anything in here. This looks good. Maybe we can build on this and get, get a letter. And I only, the letter is one page. I see. Okay, great. I do one page with the letter and the backside, I'll put my current inventory on it. Okay, thank you. Another question is, I am in Mike Ferry's Vault program, and I also noticed they have Adapt. Yes. The Mindset by Tony Smith, I saw that, it's new, it must be good. But yeah. my question is, uh, what's the difference between Vault and Adapt? Were you, are you in Vault too? 
I am. I, I don't use the vault as much, but I do have it there as a resource when I need it. Okay. Um, Adapt, it's really just like a mini coaching call. It's just not a live coaching call. Um, okay. So Tony always focused, Tony's call every Tuesday is on mindset. Ron's call on Wednesday is on skills and he's usually working specifically on a script, dissecting the script, breaking it down, knowing the intention behind each question, knowing where to do upswings, downswings and so forth. Um, and then Friday, um, I've noticed with Mike's, I mean, I do mornings with Mike and think big with Mike. Um, and I noticed that his calls on Thursdays is usually um, a little bit of both of those calls together. Um, and sometimes he has um, a top agent that will interview, although he hasn't done that in a while. Okay, thank you very All much. Right. All right, good okay. job. Other questions for Melissa? Neil, I have a quick question. My name is Abiga. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing. Oh, absolutely. I wanted to ask you, what do you say to those buyers that have met you and they want to work with you instead of working with someone else? Um, that's a great question. I do have buyers that I will work with. Um, if it's within, if they can go out and look at properties that is conducive to my schedule, um, I will work with them during those hours and as well, I'll go out with them maybe once or twice and then I'll set it up. So maybe the next couple of showings, Neve will go out with them and then they get comfortable with her. And they have us both a little bit. And then eventually if they're, if, their search is going on for a long period of time. I'll have her work with them a little bit longer, but most of our buyers are purchasing, you know, after only a few showings. So go ahead, Abigail. Would you say that you would introduce them at the beginning? Because I am trying to, Neil and I are working on this and um, I do have to set, Neil has mentioned, and we talked about this in our coaching calls, we have to set, uh, for example, I cannot show uh, people below a specific for example, if they qualify, I have to have standards. Sure. And I tend yeah. to go back on my standards. I tend to, I, I just want to make sure that if I have that person, I can properly introduce that person. Abigail, yeah. if I might, Melissa, yeah. Abigail, I think, I, I don't think Melissa is turning over her client to somebody else. She's qualifying them. She's picking out the properties. She's telling them what property she's going to see. She's working with the qualifying process. All she's having this person do is to actually physically show the property. You're gonna go out this afternoon for three hours and you're gonna go see three properties. When you're done with the three properties, I'm gonna get on the phone with you and I'm gonna go over what you saw, what you liked, what you didn't like, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm gonna write the offer. Melissa is gonna write the offer. She's gonna present the offer and then the assistant is gonna help close the offer. Melissa hasn't turned over anybody to anybody. It's just part of the process. Exactly. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Thank you, Okay. Dear. So you're yeah. not saying, here, go with, you know, I'm not saying to, to my client, hey, go work with Abigail. She's gonna get the deal done and I'll talk to you in a month. That isn't what's happening with Melissa. Mm -hmm. Melissa's in the middle of the deal two, three times a day. And, and, yes? and no? Neve has really, she's really good at building really good relationships. And a lot of our buyers are our sellers. So they've already built a relationship with her during the transaction, during the listing transaction management and when the property is under contract. Excellent. Good job. Excellent. Okay. Another question for Melissa and then we're going to have to wrap it up here. So uh, okay. Neil, there was a question in the chat box that says, can you please repeat your accountability process? Melissa? Um, for which, for it which? Wasn't, it's not clear here. Um, I have a Keith, question. Keith, are you on here? Can you clarify the question? Yeah, I'll plug my computer in. No. In the meantime, Iris, what's your question? Uh, thank, thank you, Robert. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing. My name is Iris. My question is, you are very successful working on your database. Would you tell us what, how you nurture your database, what you do? So basically, it's just doing one mailing every quarter, it's sending them out something of value um, with what's happening in the market. Um, and then I also will put in there too, like now when we the, the January letter goes out, 
we'll recap our goal, what we accomplished in last year, and then what our goals are for this year. And um, then reaching out to everyone, having at least one conversation per quarter. I mean, I've already talked to people Thanksgiving and Christmas or the, during the holiday, wishing everybody happy holidays, and now going through and calling everybody to wish a happy new year. Um, and then I have a certain amount of uh, people in my database that I talk to at least once a month. And then my investors and developers, a lot of them, I'm talking to them on a weekly basis. Neil and Melissa, this is Keith. Uh, the question about the accountability uh, with your partners each day, the numbers and everything you said and plan, and then uh, feedback at the end of the day, that process you were speaking out about earlier. Oh, yep, yeah, the lead follow-up. Yeah, could you kind of tap on that a little bit? Yes. Yeah, so this is something new that I just started for 2021. So what we do is we, I have, it's myself and this other gentleman, his name is Cornelius. We list on a piece of paper, just what our leads are for that day, who we're going to be calling. And then we will take a photograph of it. We text it to each other and then we'll type in what our goals and intentions are for doing that lead follow-up. And then at the end of the day, we'll recap um, what our, what we accomplished, you know, who we didn't meet, who we weren't able to get a hold of, and if we're going to throw them out or if we're going to, how many more times we're going to try them. Thank you very much. All right. Good stuff. Okay. Let's unmute yourselves. Everybody unmute yourselves. Let's give Melissa a big hand. This has been great. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Melissa, thank you so, so much. We're going to take a couple of minutes right now. You're welcome to hang out um, if you want or if you need to move on. We certainly understand. Um, but we're going to, I, I go around the room, so to speak, and I ask everybody what they learned. And uh, sometimes that's interesting to, the, to our guests, and sometimes they don't want to hear it. Because <laughs> in life, you're either an example or a warning. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Okay, so Melissa, again, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank Very you all for having me. Fantastic again, stuff. I, I hope really, you. really good stuff. Thank you. Okay, so what did we learned today, everybody? What did we learn? Who's first? Robert. She's so cool, calm, and collected. Like, I mean, we think about 2020 being a rough year. She had some real things go on. And it was at no point did she get like, I mean, I'm sure at that very moment, but like just talking to us, her tone never changed. Her personality never changed. It was, this is life and life goes on. And I did my business and this and that, like you asked her, you were throwing that objection handle at her and she just stayed the same tone, same cool, just, okay, this is how you do it. This is it. Like we threw questions at her and she just, the whole time, She's just the ultimate, like, cool, calm, collected person. And Mike always talks about how we need to be the calming force in the transaction. And I'll bet there's probably not many examples better of being the calming force in the transaction than Melissa is probably yeah. with her clients. Yeah, very true. Thank you, Robert. Good stuff. What else did we learn today? What else? Go ahead, uh, Vicki. Get going, keep going. <laughs> Get going and keep going. Absolutely. You bet. Good job. Okay, Armin, go ahead. I find it interesting because I see that the, the things that she has in, in order to, to get her stuff going, it seems to me like in a very short time, Melissa, you're going to be a hundred deals a year person. You already have everything in order to get there. And so I think that you provided me some encouragement because I'm going to listen to somebody I don't normally listen to because today he told me that nobody listens to him. Me. I'm me. Gonna start. <laughs> He's talking <laughs> about me. <laughs> it seems like you got the programs, you got the perfect assistant to get you there. You know. So when you start getting to that 60, 70 deal plateau, are you going to hire more people or are you going to keep going until you can't handle all the work by yourself or with your assistant? Um, 
we're going to keep growing and I'll, I'll keep hiring people as I need it so I can continue to delegate. I want to eventually get to a place where I'm just prospecting and going on appointments and negotiating contracts. Isn't that great? I love it. Good job. And you are on that path. Fantastic. What else did we learn today? Go ahead, Abigail. I learned that you have to adopt the other buyer. I've heard you say that a couple of times, but I don't know why. It just clicked right now. <laughs> so you know, adopt the other, yeah, the other you buyer. Know what they, you know what they say, when the, uh, when the agent is ready, the fairy will appear. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took, I took note of something else. Um, I like how she says that, you know, I'm just curious, do you have someone who keeps you up to date with work? That is such a simple sentence that I can just, you know, ask someone, right? And then ask them for their uh, name and number. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Got it. Absolutely. Candy, did you have something? Yes. The importance of building a really good quality past client database and she really and she stays in touch but it sounds like they're really um you know provide they provide a lot of business for her and number two i love the way she talks to people it's so welcoming and it's got a nice pace and it makes you feel like this is a safe space and you like to talk to her and you trust her yeah absolutely melissa's gonna come back you guys keep this up i know <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna see melissa at 12 15 daily <laughs> Okay, go ahead. What else do we have here? Any other any other comments? We learn anything else? Neil, I just have a question for you. When you say they say that when the agent's ready, the fairy will appear, I'm just curious who they are. It's, it's, <laughs> who are these they people that talk you're about? You're not usually this analytical, Robert. <laughs> for you're very analytical for an expressive. <laughs> okay. What else do we learn? What else? What else? Anyone else here? Over here? I'm at uh, uh, Valencia, California. Hey, so Miguel. I just put eight, eight points. Hey, how you guys doing? Um, listen to good information. Staff, reward them. Database, purge and purify. Adopt the other side. Good thoughts, make them who you are. Accountability, set it up. Minimum contacts or work weekends and memorize so you don't always have to put it on a to-do list. So I appreciate it. Very good, great stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Excellent, anyone else have anything else they learn they wanna share? Got it all? All right, unmute yourselves one more time, please. Let's give Melissa a big hand, woo, all right. Oh, yes. Thank you all. Woo. Good job, everybody. Melissa, again, thank you very, very much.